everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm Skip Flacco, Director of Finance for MACPA. This is the other Tom Hood, who is our intern and technology expert. <laughs> We're here to share our story about using XPRL for internal purposes, internal reporting, in our, in, in, and improving our operations. Um, it's been mentioned a few times today that when people think of XBRL, they think of the SEC mandate. And that's certainly important, but we've taken a different tact with XBRL and embraced the concept of global ledger, where we've tagged everything, every financial transaction in our system, and used it in unique ways. And Thomas will demonstrate that in a little bit. Um, he's actually tagged data back, going back seven years, and on average, we have about 160,000 financial tra transactions a year that he's tagged. So that's, that's a pretty hefty number. But uh, the machine did a lot of the heavy lifting, so that's a good thing. Let me talk for a minute about why we're doing this work. And then Thomas will, will talk a little bit about the how and the what we're doing. Um, three reasons come to mind as to why we are interested in XPRL and have embarked on this project. First. We think XPRL will be of vital importance to the CPA profession in the future. Many CPAs spend at least some of their time compiling information by pulling it off a spreadsheet or a computer report and putting it in another place. XPRL has the potential to automate that process, and we think it will change how CPAs work in the future. Um, that's kind of a scary thought that the technology will impact us in that way, but um, it seems so obvious that, that that's the direction we're going to be heading. Um, that's one reason. Second reason is we um, wanted to turn dumb data into smart data. Here's an example of dumb data, which typically resides in a field on a computer screen, on a piece of paper, or in an electronic document like a PDF file. And Typically, that, that dumb data needs that piece of paper, that PDF, that field, to give it meaning and context. The problem with that is it's trapped on that document, and its usefulness and mobility is rather limited. Now, we wanted to turn that dumb data into smart data. Here's an example of smart data. And smart data is structured and tagged. Smart data describes itself to you. Smart data can be tagged once and used again and again. And um, we think that makes all the difference in the world. Third reason we wanted to, to embark on this journey, um, we wanted to free the data for our staff. We've got two systems that we're dealing with with our financial information. We have a membership database where we track AP and AR. We have a general ledger package where we do accruals and take care of fixed assets and that kind of thing. Thomas has tagged information out of both systems, pulled it together for our staff, and enabled them to have faster, almost real-time access to it in a way that we've never experienced before. And that's critically important. Um, that's a little bit about the why we're on this, this uh, journey learning about XBRL. Thomas is going to share a little bit about the how and the what we've done to, to get there. Thomas? So XBRL is fundamentally changing the way the MACPA handles uh, internal reporting. Um, thanks to the help and guidance of Eric, we've been able to use XBRL to set up a digital financial reporting platform, um, which has elements of automation, interactivity, um, a pull not push mentality where staff can pull the data dynamically that they need to see. Instead of being pushed static reports, they need to reassemble and recompile in order to make sense of their day-to-day -day activities. Uh, it also has elements of business intelligence. So we were able to use XBRL Global Ledger as a bridge between the two systems to help uh, really maximize um, the way that they're used and to provide a uh, really a bird's eye view of what's going on inside the organization. And since XBRL is XML based, it's already easily processed by many applications out there. So we went ahead and create, created a business intelligence type platform. Um, it's still a work in progress and 
it's coming along. But um, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a live demo of what you can do with your Xburial data once it's tagged. All right, so. Here it is, <laughs> the business intelligence platform at the MACPA. And of course, it's right in Excel. So Excel is able to uh, process XML. So we're able to pull it directly in. And again, that idea of interactive, dynamic, and uh, pull not push, this is all updated daily. So it's very close to real time. Uh, the users can easily uh, browse through and choose whatever they want to see. So if Skip wants to look at the actual revenue versus target revenue for conferences, you can go ahead and click on it. So now when I click on conferences, it shows the data. Now, there's also, of course, you know, there's other graphs and stuff, but um, really the holy grail what we realized is, is um, well, two things. One, the fact that it's in a familiar interface or a familiar application where users can easily manipulate the information and see it the way they want to. Um, we're also able to mimic um, a common financial report that's put out every month, the internal operating statement, and it has drill down um, capability. So you're able to see the underlying detail from both systems. You're able to um, display uh, key performance indicators just to let you know if you're on target, off, tar off target, and that's just an option of instead of looking at uh, different variances. So if we wanted to drill down into new product development, simply expand it. Say you want to look at self-study revenue, you can bring it down a step further. Then you can even break out the account number and see all the associated account, um, the AP vouchers. And then you can also see the dates that they're made on and expand them out too. So it's really giving a bird's eye view of what's going on. Um, and that's how XBRL has really been able to turn the static reporting that's common in, in many organizations and especially the MACPA into a more dynamic um, platform where the users have more control of the data and can see it in a more real-time fashion. So that's how we've really, we've really used XBRL. Skip. Thanks, Thomas. So that's a quick tour through the why, the how, and the what of what we're doing with XBRL. I want to leave you with three things to think about when you think about the technology. Number one, this ultimately, ultimately will be about automating the financial reporting process. Number two, it's an open standard. It's free. Nobody owns it. And number three, I want you to think about smart data and the benefits from that. Thank you very much.